Yeah, thrilled. Um, not only Logan, but Jermaine too. You know, um, earlier this year, and you know, I think we. I feel like we have one of the best tandems in uh, a linebacker in the league, and been able now to keep Logan for an extended amount of time. You know, he's he's the play caller on defense. I talk to him on headset. He yells things back to me that I can't hear, but uh, he can hear me yelling. But uh, no, we're super excited to have him back, and um, it's a it's great for the team, great for the organization. What do he and Jermaine bring to the table, and what do they mean to you guys on defense? Well, leadership uh, to start. Uh, they know the system inside and out. Uh, both Jermaine and Logan are uh, forward thinkers when it comes to game day, problem solving, all that stuff. So uh, I, you know, you have great football conversations with them. They're literally, you know, the old cliche of coaches on the field. There's two of them there. So um, they they can really affect, <coughs> excuse me, affect the game in so many ways. They're both talented um, guys, and um, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled that they're back. How have you seen Logan grow the most in his time here? Um, I think uh, you know he carried over his. Uh, you know, he was able to take the ball away in college. I think he had 10, or 10 career interceptions or something like that coming out of college. So we knew he could do that. Uh, he's become a, a really good tackler. He's become a good blitzer. Uh, you know, moving inside and and doing all the things that he's been able to do. Uh, uh, you know, he's he's just become a really good, well-rounded linebacker, three-down linebacker. Zach said he remembers in the draft room they were kind of sweating. You guys were sweating. Yeah. What do you remember about that during that, that third, second and third round? Yeah, I just never thought he'd uh, linger that long. You know, we, we had he was on the other team in, in the Senior Bowl when we were down at the Senior Bowl that year. So, you know, uh, we were able to – you swap guys and you're able to uh, have meetings with them and talk to them. But – um, you know, watching him, I made sure I was watching him play and saw the practices, obviously. But, you know, we kind of fell in love with him down there. And, um, you know, when he was still there, you know, you got to wait all the way to the third round. That's a long time, at least when you know you want a guy. And, oh, by the way, he was there. So it worked out. There's not many guys that can uh, linebackers nowadays that are 240 or anything that can run. Mm-hmm. You've got cool. Yeah. And, uh, what does that do for you with your packages, with your schemes? How does that, I mean, what's going to be? Yeah, you know, the more you can have the same guys out on the field doing different jobs, when you substitute, sometimes you the offense can say, all right, well, these guys are in the game and this is they only do this. When you can leave some uh, the guy same guys in and do multiple things, now you know it, it presents bigger problems for the offense. So those guys are as athletic as they are really really helps us in that in that way. Logan said that he takes a lot of pride in being able to help his teammates on the field. He obviously has a green dot, so naturally he's going to direct things on the field. But how good is he do- at doing that? No, he's really good. And I try to I, – sometimes I, I give him too much uh, because I'm telling him, hey, tell this guy this, tell that guy that. And he still has to get the call out and the down in distance and, you know, all the things that we put on him. But he, but he, but he manages it well. He doesn't – you know, he doesn't flinch. Uh, none of our guys do. Uh, but, again, in the stress of the game, uh, when you're running around and you're breathing heavy, and then you got to listen to somebody in your head, in your head, literally, um, he he handles it all very well. I think a lot of us assumed at the end of last year it would be hard to keep both linebackers. Did you have that fear, and is this a bit of a pleasant surprise that they're able to do it? Yeah, I mean, I always give credit where credit's due. Certainly, um, with you know Duke and and the crew upstairs and and uh, ownership and the way they've been able to handle all this stuff and uh with the contracts and and yeah it's it's great you know the more the more the consistent uh, more consistent we can be with our players the better we're going to be some people might suggest the linebacker is not supposed to be a premium position i'm not saying anything, but i just suggest you don't view it that way or why why do you how do you view that position as a whole well you're going to have two of them out there, and they, if, if, if they're going to be two good ones, it's better than having two that aren't so good. So, um, you know, I, I like having our guys, and uh, they're our guys, and they play well. And, uh, yeah, you're gonna, we're going to use multiple packages and things like that on third down, but you got to get to third down. Um, and in our division, if you don't have big, strong guys the way teams run the ball in our division, you're not going to be that good. And uh, we're strong up the middle with DJ and BJ and those guys inside. Um, and then you follow up behind it with two big, strong men, and that's Logan and uh, Jermaine. You know, it looks like, you know, based on, you know, they, they were here for the whole rebuild and turn around, and now they're going to be especially, you know, with the future of the defense. 
kind of uncertain in how that money is going to go. Mm. What about them maybe enables them to be part of an anchor that kind of helps bridge those two areas, so to speak, that, that will help them do that pretty well? Well, I just think, like you mentioned, that they kind of they were here at, at the bottom and have seen the top and everything in between. So they can share that knowledge with the younger players, uh, bringing the younger players on. Um, you know, I still feel like we have a great linebacker room with depth, you know, Akeem and Marcus and those guys and Joe Bocci. And so, uh, you know, not only Jermaine and Logan, but uh, the whole group does a great job of helping all of our guys on the defense. As y'all move forward, is it, and, and y'all get more younger players in future years, does it help to have guys say, you weren't here, it wasn't always like this, and, and have an understanding and kind of a perspective of yeah, I don't know that they go like that. I just think more of this is how we operate. This is how we go about our daily business. It's not about rehashing uh, some things maybe that had gone on in the past. It's more about this is what we do now and this is how we do it. You know, being a pro and on and on and on, and, you know, that behavior doesn't fly here. And, you know, they, they can just reinforce what Zach and myself are trying to get done. Um, you know, I, his athleticism, you know, you can see how he was able to, uh, you know, match up on different backs and even on tight ends at, at times. Um, but, you know, covering backs is a big part of their job, him and Jermaine. Uh, we try to, you know, put a DB and passing downs on those tight ends, but sometimes, they, you know, they're, they're matched up. And they're just su two super smart players with a bunch of athletic ability, and, and um, they've turned out to be – Two gems for us, that's for sure. You guys didn't practice yesterday. Logan obviously officially signed the deal yesterday. He said he kind of went through his normal routine. Can you just give us an insight on how he carries himself? Because I think most guys might celebrate in that situation. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but it's we're in training camp. And, I, you know, if, if a guy gets my history in the league is if a guy gets a deal done in the off season, it's a little bit different than uh, dur during the season. Um, it's hard to take a step back. You know, when you talk to our guys about their day off, it's not necessarily a day off. They're still doing, you know, the Pilates, the massages, the cold tub, the hot tub, getting a lift in. So they're not just sitting on the couch. So, I, you know, knowing him, he, he probably enjoyed some time with his family um, and uh, maybe checked his bank account. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for some guys across the league with an extension in line, it can be a distraction for them. And we've seen it. Didn't seem like that was the case for Logan. What does that say about him? Again, it just speaks to uh, you know he's a he's an adult. You know he's a, he's a guy that's a, a mature guy. Uh, always felt confident and that something would get done. Uh, he wanted to be here. We wanted him here, and um, so I just think he believed in the process and it and it worked out. He talked about his biggest challenge was the shoulder injury, the dislocation, the rehab, and trying to still play at a, at least a you know, sufficient level. Yeah. Even Well, you kind of knew what he what he was all about, and, and his teammates saw what he went through to try to get back and and uh, and and end up doing what he did for the rest of the, that year. But uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what he's made of. So you know, just kind of showed everybody that what, that's what he is. A non-Logan Wilson question: What's Miles Murphy showing you so far in this game? Um, <clears throat> we'll find out more, you know, as we go forward. But he's shown that he can rush. Uh, he's shown his his athleticism, his his length. You know, he's using using that well. You know, all these young guys uh, you could put in the same bucket, and uh, you know, we'll finally play a game, watch them run and get off blocks and tackle people. Because at the end of the day, that's how you play good defense. And um, so, until we get some of these games under our belt, then I'll really have a, we we as a staff will have a better feel for what these guys are all about.